In today's video, we'll analyze the immortal engine of the Citroen 2CV. We'll see why this engine should be studied in any engineering university and the keys that made it brilliant. We'll compare it with its German rival and see which is the best. In 1949, the 2CV had a 375 engine made up of two cylinders and boxer. With an aluminum alloy-based engine and fin cylinders, cooling was by an axial fan connected to the crankshaft. The compression ratio was interesting, from 6 to 1, and with its squared bore and stroke ratio, it could exceed 3,500 RPM, delivering 9 horsepower. Torque was only 15 pound-feet, but enough to move the 1,000-pound car. The 1950 Beetle, which it was competing against at the time, had four cylinders, with 1131 cubic centimeters and a compression ratio of 5.6 to 1, delivering 25 horsepower at 3,300 RPM. The ratio of power per cubic centimeter falls in favor of the Citroen by very little. The Beetle uses the classic and simple gear oil pump, while the 2CV goes to a modern Gerotor pump. The central part of four teeth rotates directly connected to the camshaft. With the five teeth of the external rotor, positive displacement is generated. Compared to a gear pump, the Gerotor pump is quieter, has fewer vibrations, and is more efficient. However, the gear pump is not far behind, being simpler to design and cheaper. Both pumps are very easy to repair as they only consist of two moving parts. The oil is absorbed by an oil pickup tube in the crankcase, goes up through a conduit to the pump, and is then forced under pressure inside the camshaft, and also through the veins of the crankshaft. Not all, but one version even brought channels on the connecting rods to lubricate the pin. The copper pipes carry oil to the rocker arms of the valves in the cylinder head. The aluminum oil cooler is located just behind the fan and doesn't clog other cylinders like it does on the Beetle, which has cylinder number 3 with the spark gap slightly delayed to compensate extra heat and possibility of knocking. In addition, the Beetle has a centrifugal fan attached to the large duct that directs air into the cylinders. This causes the air to change direction, increasing resistance and decreasing efficiency. The axial fan pushes straight. There's no chain or belt. The gears keep the engine in sync. The camshaft drives the valves by rods and rocker arms. Through this nut, the valve clearance is adjusted. The angled valves significantly improve the flow of gases since it does not collide with the cylinder walls, and the hemispherical combustion chamber improves efficiency. The exhaust valve is intentionally in the front. This is so that the air from the fan concentrates all its power on the hottest part, and then, in addition, the warm air goes towards the rear, heating the intake and having an even temperature throughout the engine. The hot intake ports prevent fuel drops from sticking to the walls, evaporating it and reaching the cylinder in gaseous form, mixing better with air and obtaining superior combustion. In addition, the exhaust pipes also pass through the carburetor to heat it up. Although today intake air is preferred as cold as possible to increase its density and improve power, at that time where electronic injection did not exist, the best thing was to heat the air. The hemispherical combustion chamber is complemented by a very interesting piston. It has a cut for maximum valve opening and lateral shoulders to avoid losing compression caused by the well in the center. On the Beetle, the cylinder head has straight valves which make it cheaper and easier to build, although it does slightly reduce airflow. The combustion chamber is of the inverted bathtub type. It reduces knocking and is cheaper to build than the 2CV. In both cases, the cylinders are removable and when they wear out, it was enough to take them to the shop and exchange them for already repaired parts with new pistons, speeding up the process with no dead waiting times. The connecting rods are of a single piece without caps or bolts. How are they placed? Well, one of the most interesting things is the crankshaft of the 2CV. It's made up of assembling parts to fit the connecting rods. This makes matching the crank pins really easy as they fit into a little bench lathe. It's not necessary to have a large one like the car and crankshafts where the complete piece rotates, although to be honest, since it's a dissembled crankshaft, its resistance decreases. However, the small 375 cubic centimeter engine only produced about 9 horsepower and its speed was limited to 70 kilometers per hour or 45 miles per hour. There is no conventional distributor. The spark jump is commanded by a rotor with centrifugal advance on the camshaft at the front. This means that every time the piston reaches TDC, the coil fires a spark in both cylinders regardless of whether it is the right time. In other words, the spark plug has twice the wear and therefore lasts half as long. 
This was done to save cost and not to place the distributor. Its name is Wasted Spark System. The generator was 6 volts and later it was changed to a 12 volt alternator. The flywheel is large and heavy to keep the engine rotating. Being only two cylinders, there is only one combustion per turn of the crankshaft. During the compression and exhaust stroke of each cylinder respectively, there is no one to drive the engine, only inertia kept it rotating. This makes the engine lose agility when one seeks to accelerate quickly. The Beetle is a four-cylinder and there is always a combustion stroke driving the engine. By using a crank, the same one used to change wheels, the engine can be started if there's no battery. Finally, in the upper part of the engine we find the carburetor and also the oil fill port, which at the same time has a venting filter or crankcase breather. Let's remember that when the pistons come together in the crankcase, its volume decreases and that pressure must be released somewhere. Otherwise, the seals and gaskets of the engine will explode, spitting oil everywhere. Later, the engine received modifications and grew to 425 cubic centimeters, reaching 18 horsepower. Then, to 602 cubic centimeters with 28 horses, enough to exceed 110 kilometers per hour or 70 miles per hour. The 2CV had been designed for driving in rural France, where there were virtually no roads. Its mechanical suspension using friction dampers made it very simple. You basically couldn't lose hydraulic fluid. The wiper blades are powered by the speedometer wire. The faster you go, the more it cleans. Basically, an automatic wiper. The bad thing is that if you stop completely, it stops working. The headlights are adjustable from the inside by a rod. The Beetle, although it had good off-road capability, was more intended for the German highways. Just as the thing also existed, Citroën had the Mahari version, of which many units were manufactured. The 2CV van was also very popular for delivery. Nor can we ignore the Sahara version, which had four-wheel drive thanks to the placement of a second engine in the rear. It had two fuel tanks, one under each seat for each engine, and also all the commands were duplicated, and by moving the gear stick or pressing the accelerator, one was actually driving two engines. This version is easily distinguished by the fan that breathes through the trunk door and the spare wheel on the hood. Only in Argentina, in 1967, the 2CV was renamed 3CV by the idea of the marketing department. It was done to highlight the evolution of the model and that it had been improved compared to previous years. In the rest of the world, it continued to be called the 2CV. The manufacture of this vehicle started in 1949 and ended in 1991. It remained for more than 40 years and approximately 5 million units were sold among its variants. Well below the Beetle or the Ford T, but enough to stay among the most important vehicles in history. Have you ever traveled in a Citroën 2CV? You can always support me by leaving a super thank of the value you want, or if not, by pressing the like button. Comment your experience with these air-cooled engines, and don't forget to follow me on my other networks. See you next time!